Shawnee Morris is here from the Midlands Astronomy Club. I didn't know I was a secret adjudicator in this argument, but go on. Well, we are going to talk about Comet C-2022 E3. ZTF. Okay. Yeah. But I made a point earlier that it's not as catchy a name as Halley's Comet which I always growing up called Halley's Comet until my wife scoffingly said, you know, it's Halley's Comet, unless she said it in Northern Irish. It's Halley's Comet, hi. <laughs> okay. And you can actually back me up here. I can. The double L does pronounce it as Halley's Comet. Ha ha! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Apologies for my self-indulgence, but anyway. (laughs) Shall we talk about the real reason you're in studio, which is... Another comet. Yeah. Known, perhaps easier to remember, as the Green Comet. Yes. uh, This Green Comet, it's the the last time this came by this close, was nearly 50,000 years ago. And uh, today makes its closest approach to Earth by 42 million kilometres as it's making its way back out of the solar system. Uh, But it's green because the carbon that's being released from its nucleus is being excited by the solar radiation. It actually glows heavily in infrared, but we see that effect as a green glow with our normal eyes because of that carbon, and hence why it's given the nickname the Green Comet. Right. Mm. So when can we see it? There's... A limited window. There is a slightly limited window, but this comet has been available to us uh, since about November through binoculars. Uh, It was discovered in March last year as a very distant, very, very faint object heading inbound from the Oort cloud region of the solar system. That's uh, well beyond Pluto. It's like an outer asteroid belt, isn't it? It is. It's a halo that kind of envelops the entire solar system as the remnants of those asteroids and comets were pushed out as the sun took life and its outward radiation pushed all that out there, anything that was small enough. But the odd time, something does get pulled or knocked in our direction. And when that happens, as it would get close to the sun, the natural uh, sublimation of carbon dioxide from solid to a gas, and then even closer again, you will have water molecules and so on, gets dispelled, it grows a coma, it starts having a tail, it shows colours, and it leaves a little bit of debris behind it too. And that's turning from an asteroid into a comet. And that's what we have here in this case. So it is just on the verge of naked eye visibility the last week and a half Mm. or so. Let me frame it this way. When will it be at its most vivid? Vivid is now, for the next week or so. It will diminish in brightness because it is also moving further away. In context, it's the sun, then Earth, then the comet. The comet is behind Earth, but is moving away. So right now, it is on, some places on Earth have been able to see it with the naked eye under ideal seeing conditions. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Otherwise, it is easily trackable night to night in a binoculars and does move relative to the background mm. stars night to night. The Irish Examiner was very specific they said you would see it from 23.49 today until 2.46 a.m. tomorrow. That's, that's very precise. Yeah, but not entirely correct because as soon as it gets dark, you can see it and it's there all night. It will move from the uh, northwest through, sorry, the northeast yeah. through to the southwest as the night progresses. But where's the examiner published? Cork. Yeah, you can probably see it in Cork <laughs> only in those times. Yeah. Favorably, yes. Yeah. yeah. Dark tourism. There was a piece on taking care of business with Ronan Berry last night Ah. where the dark sky is becoming a very rare commodity. Ireland has a few recognised dark sky sites. The most recent was Mayo Dark Skies. Uh, The first as a gold tier platform award winner was in Ballon Skelligs in Cork. Uh, I've been down there numerous times myself and they do an annual event. They will be in March for Irish Astronomy Week. Uh, Male Dark Skies are getting in on it too because there's a tourism aspect to it. There's the science as well and there's the preservation of, for the environmental awareness whereby these areas, you're not allowed any outdoor lights after 9pm mm. and so it's leaving nature to be as it is and also to enjoy the night sky too. But we've so many places in the Midlands where we there's do. no light pollution. Very little light pollution. Yes, like even in Bora, where Midlands Astronomy Club, we were there for mm. Science Week back in November. And it is exceptionally dark. But even on the darkest nights, you still have those distant glows of the white LEDs or the orange sodium, depending on what direction you're looking in, you see. And uh, while it doesn't really affect us 
naturally. It is also whereby if you have astrophotography, which is a booming business now worldwide, you want to have the darkest skies available and people will travel and they'll put themselves up in B&Bs and hotels and they'll take their equipment and they'll publicize the fact that this area of Ireland is where they took those beautiful photographs and then publicize that to the world. And that brings more astrophotographers in. So that's the idea with dark sky tourism. We used to have a touch of it in Clonbelogue and then in the last few days, it's like Folsom Prison out there. There's a lighthouse on Boston Hill and the whole bog is lit up. It's bizarre what's yeah. going on. And with the turbines as well and they have the little lights on the, the top little of the red lights, as yeah. well for safety, of course. Yeah, but I'm not sure what's going on in, on Boston Hill. Something to look into and maybe some <laughs> listeners have the answer. Final word, did I hear there's an event for your group in Athlone for the Midlands Astronomy Club in the not-too-distant future? We had one last night. Oh, it was last it night? It was last night, yes, at the Athlone Subaqua Club. That's our new home for, in Athlone. We're not uh, moving out of Tullamore. We're going to be doing something later this month as well. So our public lectures can- calendar has now got back up and running. And we had a good array of people coming, introduced them to astronomy, looked at telescopes, set them up, uh, and we're working towards bringing back our Cosmos Star Party on Saturday, the 25th of March as well.